Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, so after recording a few episodes about Canvas, uh, I'll, I thought that it would be a good idea to sum that up by creating um, a game in JavaScript with React and TypeScript um, that uses Canvas. Uh, and I was looking through simple and the most popular um, games uh, like the entire history of gaming and of course uh, my decision is to make the uh, simple snake game uh, but actually I think it's gonna be uh, really really uh, teaching and uh, really fun to watch because we will be using react to manage the um, state of the game and uh, I will talk uh, about this in the end uh, but now I mentioned uh, now I can mention that I don't really think that react is a great tool if you decide to ever create uh, a game uh, it's well rounded for stuff like building the web applications and mobile applications with react native but definitely there are better tools uh, when it comes to building a game or a game that uh, runs in browser uh, but uh, let's get going uh, what i have here is a, a very standard um, a react template with typescript one thing that i added and we'll be using in our site, site components and types for these so let's get going uh, i'm going to start by going to app and basically yeah removing everything uh okay and uh what i will do is i'm gonna create a new folder and call it game and here i will create our uh, main component and just call it game tsx it just return anything for now it's like turn div game and let's render that here and we're gonna work in our new wonderful component uh, it should yeah it should just display the game okay so uh, we need actually <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff but first thing uh, we need a canvas to draw on and uh, some kind of canvas component that would allow us to to draw our changing game onto the screen and um there are a few main points when it comes to the game uh, if you don't know snake game basically it's you have a point moving across the screen and whatever it comes to a point that will call food it will grow meaning the the there will be another segment added to our snake um and here are a few differences when it comes to the rules of the game for example in some uh, version of the game if, if you hit the outside wall meaning the boundaries of your uh, game uh, you die uh, but actually we will code it so that whenever you hit yourself and only yourself you finish the game but whenever you hit the outside wall right so let me just maybe show it to you real quick so we'll be having a let's call it a grid right some food that you're supposed to pick up and then of course you will have your snake which will be built of segments right and whenever you hit a wall will actually allow um, the snake to move automatically in one direction or another uh, but whenever the snake hits himself that's gonna be our game over right so these are basically uh, the rules and of course whenever you eat the food uh, you will add a segment to our snake the rules are I think pretty simple so as I mentioned uh, let's start by creating the canvas component that uh, we can uh, use so let's create another folder here oops uh, and let's just call it 
canvas and I'm going to create two files, one for our component canvas uh, .tsx, and then canvas style to sell it just a little bit. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to canvas, we kind of need a connection between the standard canvas HTML element in the web and the um, the React library. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get it going. Uh, oops, not that. Uh, this is canvas styles. That's not the file. Okay. So uh, let's start with the props. Basically, every single prop you can pass to uh, Canvas to the standard HTML Canvas element uh, should be acceptable. So let's, oops. So where is, yeah, this is the HTML Canvas element. And as you can see, uh, it gets a lot of properties and methods and so on. So we should be able in our game, in our app, pass any property that is acceptable by the um, HTML canvas and apply it in our component. Therefore, we will mark our props like this. Uh, it's gonna be rather long, but this is detailed HTML proper props which is generic using AGN, React Canvas HTML attributes of HTML Canvas elements, so it's generic inside of a generic, uh, and then HTML Canvas element. Okay, so this this is the uh, proper type for Canvas props. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but basically what that means is um, you can pass any single um, HTML canvas property and apply it. Also, we're gonna uh, pass here another function and this is gonna be a draw function that will specify uh, what actually should be drawn into the canvas. Okay, um, all right. So we're gonna draw and use props here. So this is the rest, basically this is the function and these are all the HTML attributes from the canvas element. Um, yeah, and our element should be canvas, but we're gonna style it a little bit. Uh, so, I think this is the only place that will need a cell component. Uh, yeah. So this is our canvas and it's a styled canvas. Oops. And let's do the port and TNPX solid black for now. Uh, with is gonna be 800 pixels and height is gonna be 400 pixels and box sizing is border box. Okay, and we can basically uh, import that and render it on the screen. Start components, okay. Um, S can uh, no, 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 that should, of course, import from our other styles. Uh, and we can make it self enclosing that. And uh, yeah, let's render that. Um, Canvas part from canvas. Uh, 
and this is default export okay uh, function draw is missing of course uh, we need to create at least some kind of um, dummy function so draw is equal to context this is canvas yep drawing context basically we don't need to draw anything right now we just need to pass something to make the compiler happy okay and we have our canvas so that's kind of cool um but i think oh we're gonna style it uh, a little bit more uh, so basically yeah these are the this will be the grid for our game but let's make it uh, a little bit more interesting so i'm gonna create a um, styled component here so game styles yes uh, and i'm gonna call it game wrapper Okay, we have that and that's going to be a standard div uh, but it's going to be a little bit styled so we uh, we're going to center our game so let's do this real quickly using um textbox uh, we're going to set outline to none just to get rid of the cursor Class direction column. Okay, so let's wrap it. I can just import the wrapper again. It's going to be fine. Okay, that's that. Now it's centered uh so what i would like to do is maybe go to app CSS real quick and change the body to background color black um probably this is yeah this is not important okay um up CSS. And it's not working. Of course. Uh, so let me see. Buddy. Okay, it doesn't look like it's applied. Uh, oh, this is. This is another class. Okay, black on black. Well, we don't see a grid now. So let's fix, the, fix this real quick. Let's go to our canvas style. And this is going to be kind of cool technique to create a, a gradient border. So what you do is you do border image slice and set it to one. And then border image image source you can create a linear linear gradient here to left and i just have some nice colors here a d5 3 i 9 d okay this this is looking nice really cool so i think we can uh move on with our game okay so um actually we should go to our wonderful canvas well what we need is the reference to that canvas and we can obtain it using use ref the problem is that we want need it only 
in that component, but also in the parent component, which is a game. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to forward the reference from the parent to the child and apply it into the child. Okay, but this this can be done rather easily. So let's create canvas re reference. Okay. Uh, let's import that uh, and this will create the reference and we have to pass it here as a ref it's going to be canvas ref now the question is how do we use and apply this in um, canvas which is a child uh, basically what you have is a forward uh, ref uh, function from react so let's get this uh, this doesn't look good for whatever okay and through that function you can obtain the reference to give an element or just a reference uh, from parent to children and um, this actually changes um, the function uh, the uh, functional component a little bit so what you have to do is forward ref here, and this is another function, so remember to close it. And then uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a generic function, so we have to apply the typing. And first is the uh, type of the reference. For us, this is HTML canvas element. And then there's the properties, the props of the component. And now it's all wrong, they red. Uh, and here we'll have, oops, it's outside of the unpacking of the components. What you'll get is the canvas reference. Okay. And then we can just apply it. And here, uh, okay, I thought we will have a problem, but nothing yet. Okay, now uh, we have a problem uh, with the typing and as of now I couldn't find a way to have that resolved. So I'm just going to do an ugly hack. If you can avoid using any TypeScript, you definitely should. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, now we're passing the draw function, but we're not really using it yet. Uh, so let's just do uh, first we'll check the canvas reference if there isn't any which will happen on first render I think uh, just return nothing then comes the second render with when the reference value is provided and we can just render the, the correct stuff but we need a use effect hook um, can we get this effect, please? Use effect, thank you. Uh, to trigger the draw every time the draw function changes. Uh, we're making a game and basically what happens is uh, every period of time, for example, I don't know, five times a second, you render the screen uh, applying the changes that uh, should appear on your screen between those periods right and uh, this is the refreshing rate of your game like frames per second right you always want to have the 60 fps 60 fps or even more if possible but uh, basically we'll have to render our canvas with applied changes um, in a loop we'll probably use set terminal or something like that uh, to refresh what is presented on a canvas on a screen that will reflect the, the model, the data, the logic of our game. Okay. Therefore, whenever the draw or canvas reference changes, will trigger our effect. And we have to get rid of some stuff 
first uh, if there's no canvas reference return okay let's then the canvas then canvas is canvas ref uh, and we have to pass it to react ref object with html canvas element uh, correct and as you can see here it is either canvas or no before we have to check for no case here so return to uh, and we need the drawing context uh, so this is going to canvas get context to d and as you probably imagine this is again canvas rendering context or null therefore we'll do another early return if that's a null and then finally having that we can uh, draw with the context okay this is um yeah this is almost done i believe uh, one thing one interesting thing though uh, our canvas doesn't seem to display there's a body there's a root mm, there's a game Excuse me. Oh, now we have it. Okay, looking good. Um, one thing to know from the very start, uh, we set the width and height to 800 pixels and 400 pixels, right? If we didn't, uh, it would be changed to, I believe, 300 by 115. And if I'm gonna search for canvas right now, so that document query select for canvas and ask for the width, you will see it's 300 and the height is 150. So there's the height and the width for styling the canvas and then there's internal uh, internal size of the canvas that would make your pixels appear smaller or bigger and you will see that as soon as we'll, as we'll get something drawn into the canvas but remember that uh, the dimensions that you set using CSS are not the same uh, dimensions that you provide or canvas we could of course change that uh, by providing different parameters here right and you could see that this wasn't somehow distorted and didn't change dimensions uh, but the internal dimensions now are changed so you change the internal dimensions of the canvas by providing the properties not by styling okay moving on oh, i believe that's going to be a long one uh, but yeah moving on moving on uh, the next part the next part is getting actually something drawn into the game uh, so, how do we do that? Um, I'm gonna encapsulate all the logic of the game into a custom hook. So, whenever you'd like to create uh, some kind of logic that could be reused across components in React, or you just want to move the logic uh, out of the uh, rendering description of the component 
you can uh, use the, uh, you can do that by creating the custom hook so i'm gonna create something you basically build it by name it by using use a keyword i'm gonna create use game logic.ts okay and uh this is gonna be a simple function but it will use effects and state from react therefore it will be a custom hook so nothing for now and it will also return some stuff uh, let's start by figuring out um, how should we represent the body of the snake okay so uh, we have a grid right and then we have our snake and basically how it should be represented is an array why because each segment will have x and y position describing where the given segment should be placed um, where it should be placed in our canvas remember here is zero zero uh, and then we have axis moving this and this way okay uh, so let's let's try that uh, so i'm gonna use state here and uh, we have a snake body which will start only uh, with a with a head um snake body and set snake body uh use we're gonna use state and that's gonna be hmm, let's create an interface here describing something we'll call position uh and that's gonna be basically x with a number and y with a number so the dictionary with Two numbers and the type here should be the position array and we're gonna start uh, with x set to zero and y set to zero and now if i remember that correctly that's actually um i might be wrong here um if we have a canvas then the zero zero point is in the middle and not here if i remember that correctly okay um yeah and what will uh, return from our uh, wonderful um book is of course the same body this is going to be the one of few things will return so export that so basically right now our game logic contains only the information about the starting position of our head which is okay for me so um let's talk drawing right gonna create a new folder here and call it draw and i'm gonna create a function and call it main and then just draw this it's gonna be fine okay so uh this is gonna be the function that will be responsible for well just just drawing stuff into the canvas so basically uh, what we need here is the context and the snake body so let's create interface here a draw arcs is fine and that's going to be context which is of type of course canvas rendering you know that 
jQuery Live Scene 9. Uh, and the uh, sync body is going to be a position, and we can't import that because uh, we need to export it. Uh, yeah. Okay, import that. Great market with correct arguments. So that's going to be draw arcs. Um, and yeah, we'd like to just build the snake body. So I'm going to call snake body for each because we can have main segments. Segment. Okay. Let's call context uh, filler rectangle. Uh, the position should be segment X, segment Y, and we need to specify a snake size. Uh, and I found out that snake size of five is working pretty good. So snake size, or maybe let's call it segment size and export default draw okay and therefore our drawing is split off from the logic which is nice and we need to use it here so basically um, we can just I think, I hope, let's use that here. Um, and no, we cannot because this does the signature doesn't match. Uh, so uh, I it would shadow the name, so I'm gonna just call it like role game. Okay, and then here I can use the draw function, and the stuff that I have to pass it here is the context, which is fine. And then snake body will get from our uh, logic hook, so use game logic, and here we have snake body, and. If I didn't screw this up royally, we should have something on the screen, and we do not. Mm, and why is that? We have snake body, which is position. Oh, um, returning that. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Uh, I believe the problem might be that for the first render, this is empty. So let's try. No, it is not. And yet it does not appear. Okay, so one thing that is of course missing is the context field style and that's going to be rgb red let's make it red okay and it will pop right here in this corner maybe let me just bump it up a little bit uh so yeah i was right in the first place this is actually the zero zero position so that's great Well, and now let's try figuring out um, the movement of our snake, since this is going to be, uh, well, the most important uh, thing in our game. So basically, uh, we have to redraw our snake in the intervals uh, and adjust its position. And um, this kind is gonna be like our 
basic game loop like redraw, 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 re-render. And one might think that the good thing to use here uh, would be the uh, set interval. And I tried it. Um, and if you Google set interval react, right? Uh, you will find you will find that there are problems with it and it doesn't really work correctly but therefore uh, we'll have to create our own hook uh, and I'm going to create YouTube folder now and we'll create a hook that uses interval uh, and basically if you google something like use interval to react uh, you can find this in use hooks ts the whole description of it and also other useful hooks okay so utils use interval .ts. Um, and that's going to be rather easy uh, we're just going to need a uh, few things from here use effect use layout effect and use ref okay and we're set so use interval uh, the signature of this function is going to be the same as our standard set interval so there's a callback and there's a delay and it's going to be a number or null and whenever you'd like to cancel the interval that you've set through the use interval hook you pass the null as a delay okay. so we need our reference here to the saved callback so it doesn't change um, with every error render this layout effect and oops to store it and it should be run every time the callback is changed apply the current um, value okay and can you use use effect here to figure our callback and we'll set up our interval here I uh, will not schedule any uh, interval if there's no delay or the delay is set to zero and return and then store our id and here we actually use set interval so uh, trigger the current function with a delay okay and uh, here whenever we have to clean up of course we have to clear the interval with the stored id and run it every time the delay is changed but, and yeah that's basically uh, the use interval hook And we can use it now in our game logic. Uh, so yeah, basically after we set the state, we can set up our interval. So use interval. Uh, and the function that we'll call is we'll create move snake function and let's write that 75 this this is basically you can extract this this is basically a movement speed All right so the well not exactly but the lower this value is the often the more often you call your callback and therefore the movement is happening 
uh, faster, right? So this is not exactly the speed because the lower it gets, the faster you are. Okay, and now to our uh, move snake uh, function. Basically, first thing that we have to figure out is the direction in which we're going with our snake. Okay, and to do that, we'll have to set up the um, key down event listener. So, yeah, basically, we will have to store our direction. So, let's start by creating an enum. Uh, and it's going to be up, down, left, right value. This is nice. Uh, we'll need to export it, probably. And now we have to, let's just create um, some kind of simple function right here. And let's see where this is working. And let's console like, I will move this thing. Sounds good. Let's check this. Okay, you can see that running. And if I bump it up to, let's say, You will see now it slows down. If I make it, it will slow down even more. Okay, so let's maybe set it to 100. A key handler. Yes, our controls basically. So let's do this on key down handler. It's gonna accept the. It's gonna get the event and this is gonna be a keyboard event and we'll attach this listener to HTML div element so probably to our game wrapper and here is uh, where we control the direction of our snake so we check for event code and we use the keys here, key codes, ks, uh, we will need to set our direction to direction down, and we have to store it, so let's just create another state, um, direction, set direction, and Basically, we could start with some kind of direction. I mean, whenever the game starts, just hit it off and um, make our snake move in some direction. But I'm going to start with undefined, so the game starts on the user key press. Okay, moving on. Uh, window break, of course. Face uh, key. W set direction to a direction up case key D set direction direction right break case uh, key uh, a of course set direction direction left break okay and this is how we basically uh, control our snake uh, we need to uh, return this and apply it somewhere okay so in our game we also get on key down handler and let's apply this here so this is going to be on key down on key down handler okay and we can test it really easily basically 
by saying it's playing even without you. Right. Uh, oh, and we can get rid of that console log for now. So I'm pressing keys. I hope you can hear that, but nothing is happening. And this is uh, due to this interesting feature that we have to add to make it actually run. We have to add tab index and set it to any value zero will do. And now, as you can see, we uh, are listening to the key codes, but there's something also more interesting. Whenever I press a key, the draw function is being called. So that function, right? And why is that? Oh, well, this is due to the fact that we set the direction which uh, renders the component because the uh, state is being changed. Uh, and that causes this component to render and that function is recreated, meaning this is treated as a new prop and is being run inside of Canvas. Uh, is it something that we want? Uh, basically, yes, after pressing each key, you would like your screen to re-render to present the new position. Is it efficient? And do we care about optimizing this somehow? Basically, no, <laughs> because, uh, well, optimizing that game in React uh, and covering every single hole that causes additional renders would be uh, time consuming. And we're gonna assume that such a simple game running on a rather powerful device would not really have any hiccups or FPS problems, but we'll see about that. Okay, so we're listening for the case. We ch we're changing the direction. Uh, basically right now, what's left uh, is software. There's many things left, but we have to make our snake move. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's do another switch statements here. And we'll switch for the direction and listen to direction up and up break. Uh, direction down. Down, break, case, direction, uh, left, break, case, direction, right, and break. Okay, and I'm thinking that what should happen is we should take current snake body, recalculate its position, and then change the state, mean reapply the, the changed state segments. And um, I would like to move that movement and segment calculations into a separate function. So I'm going to create movement ES file. Okay. And uh, here I'm going to do something like, uh, like, we're gonna do create snake movement. So basically we're gonna create functions that will um, recalculate the position for a given direction. Uh, and I'm gonna say that it accepts the grid size, which is by default five, the same as our second size. And uh, I'm going to return a few functions here. It's going to be move right, which accepts the snake body position array. Uh, move left. They're all going to have the same signature.
um, move down. Snake body position. We're gonna be similar, but not the same. And of course, move up. Uh, snake body position array. Uh, and we have to think and plan for the future here a little bit because we're starting with the one segment and we cannot just calculate our changes uh, taking into account only one segment. We have to plan for basically as many segments as possible. How far can our our player get, and uh, how many segments can he get? I mean, our function has not only has to not only work for one segment, but also for twenty and many more. Or my mouse just died. Okay, I have to plug it. Okay. So let's let's figure that out. Uh, how does the snake move actually? Because this is this is rather interesting, I think. So we have our grid and we have our snake, which is an array of positions right so uh, what we can do is we can move only the head right then remove the last element and move rest of the body forward that would make sense right so we're moving the head and then we're removing the last segment okay because well basically this is what is happening so we're starting like that then we're changing the head position right then we're taking these two pieces and removing that one so how can this be achieved uh, when it comes to coding? Um, one thing that is important is that we have to create a copy of our body because uh, we don't want to manipulate the, the uh, array that is in our state. It will do us no good. Basically, you always have to create a copy of a state in the React, and sometimes this is happening automatically. Sometimes you well have to do it by hand. So I'm gonna copy the snake body. Do not modify the uh, value that is in the state. I'm gonna calculate the head position, which is current head position, and that is gonna be the body copy, basically the last segment in our array. Okay, so this is position of my head now. Okay. Then we call body copy shift, which removes the first element from an array. Okay. And then we return new value, which is body copy, and we just change the head position. So since we're moving right, the new position is going to be head position X plus grid size. Okay, so we copied the body, then we've taken the last element of the of an array, which is the head position. We remove the first element, as I've drawn before, and what we're returning is a, a copy uh, of the state, the new array, which has all the elements, but the uh, last element is updated head position. Okay. So, because when we're moving uh, right, 
we're adding to the x value when we're moving left we're subtracting from it and the same goes for the y axis for up and down and basically um we could extract it into a function but i'm kind of too lazy so it should be a minus uh, this should be y and this should be plus and moving up is the same so it's y y oh that's gonna be a long one i think okay so yeah we're uh, just changing the position of the head and removing the first element in an array and copying that so this is describing our movement move movement okay so we can use that in our game logic so let's get maybe here and just create snake movement that's going to return our move down move up move left move right okay so in case of um up we're gonna call move up with the snake body then move down with the snake body move left and move right okay cool uh, and then we have to get the return value and apply it to the state so i'm gonna go snake body after move moment variable here and it's gonna be position or undefined and whatever comes oops out of that what the hell whatever comes out of that function has to be applied here uh, yep. uh, and in the end uh, we have to uh, apply this right so um, so 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 set snake body snake body after movement um well we have to check whether it's not undefined okay with this okay as you can see, uh, this is already working, but in a rather <laughs> unexpected way, right? We already can control our uh, snake, but the problem is it's like leaving behind the trail of its past movement. So uh, let's see whether we can fix that. Um, in our canvas component, probably in our effect, uh, we could add the return function here and maybe clear uh, like everything whenever the the uh, there is another mount incoming, so something like that. Let's see whether that helps yeah so that that was part that was missing now whenever the next uh, render isn't coming oh, we are clearing the canvas and to do that uh, clean up a function is really helpful from this effect so now we can control our snake on the screen which is cool uh, there's a problem of course one it can go past the boundaries of the canvas so that's one problem 
The second problem is, uh, from what I remember in the game, whenever you're moving right, you shouldn't be able to switch to the left. And whenever you're going up, you shouldn't be able to go down and vice versa. So let's try figuring that one out. Uh, that means uh, we have to uh, we have to prevent changing the direction. So go to the game logic and here. Okay, uh, let's check the directions here. If current direction is in the direction up. set direction uh, if direction isn't the direction down you can set direction if direction isn't direction left and if direction isn't the direction Oops, direction right. And that should prevent the snake from going into itself. So I'm moving down and I cannot go up. I'm moving right and I cannot go left. Okay, this is wonderful. So the next step that we have to handle. Um, well, the problem that I would like to handle is going off the boundaries. As I mentioned, uh, we shouldn't be able to go outside of our grid. So basically what I would like to happen, if that's our grid and our snake is hitting the wall, here, uh, I would always like for him to go in the middle. So basically, if you're going here and you hit the wall, you should go to the right. And if you go from here and hit the wall, you should go to the middle, which is left. Basically, split at the half of the width. The same should happen for hitting the wall um the left on the or the right wall go up if you hit it below the half of the height or go down if you hit it like above right so oops uh let's figure that out um this is gonna be in our move snake uh, because it has to happen automatically so for the app if Snake, uh, hmm. basically, we have to know where our head is. So let me introduce a, a variable here. Let's call it uh, snake head position, and that's going to be snake body, snake body length minus one. Okay, and uh, oh my god, you could think, why won't you use memo to optimize that? Like, yeah, use memo. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make sense because that would actually depend on the sync body, right? Uh, and sync body changes every render. Therefore, we're calling React use memo every render, and the cost of recreating that memoized value is basically the same, or maybe even more, as just reading that value straight from an array. So, um, be thoughtful, uh, maybe not thoughtful, consider your optimizations very carefully because. Uh, if you don't understand them well, you might as well just make it worse than make it better. Okay, so we have snake head position, uh, and into the move snake we go. 
So if snake at position uh, is greater greater than y is greater than zero, that's fine. We can move our snake. Uh, else, if um, and here is why we need the reference to be in game. We have to figure out where is the half of the width and half of the height of our canvas. So I'm going to make our game logic accept uh, arguments here. And I'm going to just call it use game logic arcs canvas width and canvas height. Okay, let's use it here. Use the logic. Uh, and we need to change that here. Uh, so basically, um, the canvas width and the canvas height. That's gonna be canvas high canvas width. That's gonna be canvas rep current um, client width and canvas rep current client height. Okay, that solves that. Okay, so let's see whether we can use that information in our use game logic. Uh, yeah, let's just start by loading that out. Uh, oops, nope, 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 nope. Let's get rid of that for now. Okay, so are these correct? I don't think so. Um, we have our canvas and it's set to 400 and 200. So maybe this should be actually inner. Um, let's see. Client of width and height. We have even access to, yeah. Width and height. Okay, now that's correct. Now the client width and client height. So with that, we can carry on with our logic. Um, so else if we have the canvas uh, width, the snake head position X is more than canvas width. So half a width, uh, let's automatically change the direction to direction uh, left, uh, else uh, set direction to direction right. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's test this out. Go in here, and I'm no longer hitting the. Uh, I'm no longer overflowing and crossing the boundaries. And when I'm across the half of the width, I should move to the right. And in other situation, I should move to the left. Wonderful. Now it's just a matter of repeating that for other um, directions. So for direction down, um, yeah, uh, we need to check if we have canvas uh, height, canvas width, and snake head position. 
dot uh, x uh, is greater than canvas with minus grid or oh, in the grid size here uh, because if I do that if you're moving down if we're moving down I need to check the y position and check whether it's lower than canvas half okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because I don't want to go over the board okay so if we try that that's not gonna work because we're missing one parameter here which is the grid size and this can be taken from from draw segment size okay here it is uh segment size okay, let's try that um Okay, we're not changing the direction first. Uh, canvas, so it will just carry on moving. Uh, or let's say set direction to undefined. Uh, we can do that, right? So the direction is. This would bring us to a halt. Let's try this. Okay, uh, I think I know what may be wrong. Uh, so basically, we need to change that to the default value because of how pixels are calculated or maybe not okay uh, the problem is, is that I of course uh, use the wrong dimensions here right so a little bit of the in there Uh, else let, let's just stop at the bottom for now so this is, do you have to say that it's undefined okay we have so now it should stay at the bottom <laughs> let me speed it up to where we were so 100 And we should stop at the bottom. Uh, a little too soon. That should be segment size. Let's try again. And we're stop at the bottom. Wonderful. So now we could write the correct, correct if statements. So check for canvas width. And if the snake head position x is greater than canvas width uh, divided by 2 the direction should be left and in the other case it should be right okay the same should go for direction left 
uh, but with the different if statements here we're looking for the snake head position x to be greater than zero and we allow moving left else checking for canvas height and snake head position y to be less than canvas height divided by two and in this case we're doing set direction direction down the other case is set direction direction up uh, and the last statement which is moving right so i can check for canvas canvas with and snake head position x to be less than canvas width minus grid size uh, i mean the second size and then check for canvas height snake head position y canvas height and by two and then we'll set direction to direction down and set direction to direction direction up and that should cover all of the uh let's say intelligence of our snake basically we're going down and moving and going left and moving down and moving here okay this this is looking nice and working as expected so we can move on to the next phase and this is going to be the food placement we need to place some food for our snake uh, so um yeah we basically need our state here and that's going to be food position and uh, set food position we must make sure that this is randomized but also landing in our grid position okay so you state gonna be position array or undefined we're going to start as undefined and the reason for that is uh at the very start we don't have the uh canvas or maybe or do we hmm. it looks as you see now we're starting with the undefined so we cannot do that but we can initialize it in uh, effect so use effect will trigger it whenever the mm, canvas height or canvas width changes uh, and yeah basically i think we'll have to do the same for our position here so Yeah, let's create an auto function and call it random position on grid ps um, random position on grid uh, and what we'll pass here is two things Or we're gonna pass the grid size random position on grid arcs I'm gonna pass the grid size which is gonna be a number and uh, we're gonna pass um, how to call the 
threshold. Is that how this is spelled? I think yes. So the limit, so the maximal value of our um, random number. So get the grid size and by default it's going to be 5 threshold. And what we will return here is math floor. So we have to um, we have to round it up to the closest integer because we're moving on a grid and the grid is like you know incremented by one. So math random times canvas uh, I mean threshold by grid size divided by grid size times uh, sorry times grid size basically this function will return a random number from zero to threshold uh, and in steps of grid size and our our, our grid is like one five ten and so on so not by one but by five um export default and the position grid looking nice we can use it here to set foot position and that's going to be actually the one position not an array because we only have one food and x is going to be random position on grid with this grid size set to segment size and threshold this for x is going to be canvas width uh, and then there's a y uh, which is going to be pretty much the same. Yeah, we don't really need to pass the grid size because uh, we have the default value, but anyway. Um, and we have to protect ourselves from the undefined and low values. Um, it can be zero, so. Okay, now it can be zero. So we can do like this. Okay, and then actually we can use that very same effect to randomize the starting position of our snake. Uh, so not like that, but like that. Uh, one problem though. There might be a situation where um, we spawn the food in the very same place as the snake head. That can occur, however, is very unlikely, and I won't write the logic to, to handle that specific corner case. Okay. Um, so we have the foot position and we have to return it to draw it okay so it should be now available here and we should pass it to our drawing function so let's go to the draw and let's accept the foot position Oops. position uh, and we have to draw it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, can it start undefined? That's the question. Uh, yes. Okay, so we have to handle that case too. So it can be undefined. Uh, so let's check for the foot position. Uh, 
let's set the fuel style to be green. Uh, and fill a rectangle, uh, foot position X, foot position Y, and segment size and segment size. Okay, and now it doesn't seem to work yet. Oh. Okay. That was unexpected. So yeah, that's the first render and of only after we think we're moved. But we'll fix that uh soon. Uh so what else? What else? Let's, how can we fix this? Could maybe start this, that's undefined. Yeah. Um, I believe there's gonna be a better way to handle that. Okay, so the problem is that when we start, it doesn't show the correct um, state of the game, but we will handle that in the future. Uh, and yeah, it will work, I hope. Um, the next step is actually to do, 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 do. Uh, handle the eating of the um, of the uh, food. So that's gonna happen if our move snake, and we have snake body after movement. So we'll have to check whether the snake uh, will eat the food. So if we, if we have the direction. It doesn't, it's not undefined, and we have foot position, uh, and we can create another helper function. Will oops, will snake hit the food? Uh, and what we'll have to pass here is the foot position, the snake head position and the direction. So let's get to, maybe let's create this in our movement since it's somehow related to, to the movement. Um, so basically since the move is creating the next, since the move is calculating the next position of our snake it's like a one step into the future and we have to check not whether the snake position is overlapping the foot position currently but will it hit the food like one frame into the future okay so let's create that function will snake hit the food uh, let's add the arcs here. Interface for this is going to be will snake hit the food arcs food position is position of course the snake pet position is the position. And the direction is the direction. Okay. Um, let's just make it a function. 
So let's get the arguments. Direction. Uh, and uh, again, we have to use a switch uh, case statement because we have to check for the direction. Direction up, break, direction down, break, direction uh, left, break. It's gonna be, yeah, the longest video ever try to do this in one sitting okay so uh, here we have to check whether the since we are moving up the boot position on the x-axis so let me just show you so this is our grid and if we have a foot here and we're moving up and we have we have to check where the head is on the x-axis on the very same point but on the y-axis there should be like one segment size ahead so this is y and this is y uh, basically minus well, plus five, right? So therefore, we have to check where the foot position X is the same as snake position X. And snake position Y uh, minus five is equal to foot position Y. Okay, this is oops, this is our case, and we don't need a break since we're returning, so that's fine. Um, and then pretty much the same for down, but with a different sign, of course, since we're moving down, down, the head is ahead of the hood. And then there's a left. Uh, foot position y and snake head position y and snake head position x minus 5 to be equal to the foot position x okay return foot position y also the same basically you can copy that and change the sign here okay and this takes care of the calculation where we hit the food so we can use that and whenever that happens uh, we have to add to our uh, array and basically what we'll add is the position of the food because we just hit the foot, right? So set snake body, snake body after movement, we have to spread it. Uh, and then at the end, add the new head position, which is foot position X. And the Y is foot position Y. Okay, let's see that actually works so we're trying to eat the food and nothing happens of course we're just passing through it mm, so let's see what might be happening here Do we have any typo? X, X, Y, Y, 
y y x x y y x x y y x x Hmm. Okay, so what we are missing here, uh, what's happening, even if we hit the food and we set the sync body, then uh, we have the if statement that resets it. So actually, we should do a little fix here and only set it if we didn't hit a food. Uh, and that gives us possibility to grow our snack, which is cool. What we need though is um, after we hit the food, we have to reset the position of the food and set it to something new. So the X is random point of the on the grid, random position on the grid, sorry. And Y is the random position on the grid. And what we are passing here is the class world, which is canvas width and the grid size of segment size. Uh, that shouldn't be defined by then. Uh, well, you shouldn't just use exclamation uh, without consideration, but I'm pretty sure we're fine here. Now let's hide and yeah oh we don't yeah we don't need the grid size okay let's try again moving to the food and the food changes position so that's wonderful we're almost there we're almost there um do we need to wrap it in a callback? I don't think so. So maybe I did off the recording, but there's no need. Okay, uh, next scenario. Will the snake eat itself? Okay. So again, here, let's snake eats itself. Just like in Nordic mythology so we have to check for the sync body after movement and basically we check for game over then because that's that's the moment when the game is stopped so has snake eaten itself and we pass the snake body after movement uh, we can do it in movement too because it, it feels like it depends, it, it, it is connected and in the context of movement. So create another function here. I will pass the snake body, which is a position array. Um, and we'll do some checks. First check. If the snake body is uh, less or equal to one well there's not possibility there's no possibility it could have eaten itself uh same body black okay so basically we're what we're doing here is we're detecting the collision here with the a segment of a, of a snake so head is living here and there's a body which is we have to slice it to get to it say by length minus one okay and basically we have to check whether the position of any of the segment of the body is the same as the position of a head right because if we take a look at uh, how that would work, we have the grid and we have a snake. And this is his body. Uh, 
and if the head which I will color in blue is has the same X and Y as any other segment like for example it could be here or here or anywhere else then we know that we somehow overlap the the snake's uh, head and the snake's body and that's the game over so there's a cool way to do it i'm going to use the sum function on the array and check whether a given segment segment x is equal to head x uh, basically we can return that and segment y is equal to head y okay that's cool uh has snake eaten itself uh, if so for now we just console log is game over all right And maybe just call. Um, we should game over that. But let's do if is game over. It's console log game over. Okay, so let's try that scenario. Uh, one with at least I don't know a few of these. Am I? Yeah, you see, I'm able to hit myself, and we have our game over state, which is great. Uh, so basically, we have to define what should we do on game over so i think we're gonna pass a function here and we will let the parent component decide uh, what to do in that scenario so that and Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, let's define our on game over. So basically, we could manage the state of our game here uh, with an enum. I'm going to say running uh, and game over for now. Uh, and um, on game over, we're gonna just set the state of our function, set the state of our uh, game to game over. Okay, so we need to manage that with a state. So there's gonna be a game state and set game state. Um, and we're gonna use state for that. And we're gonna start the game with game state running. Okay, looks like it might have sense. So on game over uh, what would that change um, i think we should pass that same state to our game logic 2 as that might be useful so let's accept that um, and we have to export that. Uh, 
Okay. Um, yeah, and that allows us to do some cool stuff. Like, for example, reset the game. So here, uh, below the canvas, I'm going to check for the game state. State um, and check whether it's equal to game state game over. And I'm going to add a simple button to uh, reset the game state. So button uh, play again. Um, on click, we're gonna set game state to game state running, and we have to have some kind of function to reset the game state. Um, Yeah, and maybe otherwise that that could be functionality if the game isn't over maybe let's add a button to pause the game okay but first we need the rest of the game state and that's gonna come from here so that we can play again uh so let me think um what do we need to reset the game state. Let's return it for now. And there are a few things uh, we need to reset to start our game all over. We have to set the direction to undefined we have to reset the snake body and uh, the foot position so let's copy that and we know the, these should be available and basically we should create a function for for that so oh no you're you're getting that from here, my friend. Okay. Uh, do we need something else? We set the snake body. Uh, we set the foot position. Yeah, that looks that looks good. Okay. Uh, so. I would like to lose now. The pause button isn't working yet, but we'll make it work. Okay, uh, we uh, we did change the game, uh, but. Uh, it didn't stop our snake from moving, right? Uh, so we can do that by going to our use interval and we can check for the game state. Check where it is game state running. If so, then apply the movement speed uh, to refresh the loop, and if not, just pass the null, and that will clear the clear the interval, or at least I hope it would. So that's one, two, three. Okay, now if we lose, uh, we see that the game stopped.
and our play again allows us to play again uh, our stop so let me think since we only apply the refresh rate if we have game state set to running game also should be stopped if we just um change the state here so i don't click um and let's set game state check whether the game state equal to game state running if so change the game state to oh we need another state uh post Uh, change it to post if not change it to running okay and then the label it should also depend on the game state pause or to play oh. We're gonna hit two hour marks, I, I'm afraid. Okay, so let's pause and let's play and it's working. Uh, what else do we need? We need to display the score. So let's create the score component here and it's gonna be rather simple. So um, score, this is gonna be style 8.1 h one one eight one yes success um background color is gonna be linear linear no this has to be a background linear gradient to left basically the same values we apply for the border okay cool. okay so that uh, should be the value mm, let's try and use it um it's in a game in a game ea sports it's good it's in a game um do i have this exported yes and so this is going to be S and uh, this is going to be the score. I have the feeling that my autocomplete is a little bit broken. Uh, and we'd like to display the score to a player. So that's going to be something like, um, let's use literal template. Score is snake body length minus one because we're not counting the head and just for fun let's let's make it um let's make it times 10 okay do we need anything else um this doesn't look good because this appears as a background and I would rather have the font uh, to have some color instead of the background and uh, I know this can be achieved in Chrome this is WebKit background clip text and WebKit text fill color trans Red, and combine these two and we're getting pretty much the same webkit background clip okay well i expect a different 
outcome, but it, well, it's fine. I can live with that. Um, or maybe we just get rid of that. No, it's still the same. Okay. Um, yeah, and now if we are to get some points. We update the score and we can pause the game. Okay, so basically that would be it. The one thing that I don't like really, and this is in our use game logic, is that there's this starts well in the corner instead of rendered properly so can we change it somehow well we can that is kind of cheating but probably if we pass the specific values here from the start hard coded values yeah that will fi fix this uh, and i'm gonna accept it since this video is almost two hours long and it took way longer than i expected but we have a working game uh, with additional features like ui and pausing the game and the the game over feature like we can restart the game uh, one thing though that I'm really supposed to mention is, and this is really important for you to understand, when you're programming and when you're creating apps, always choose the tools for the job. And what I mean by that, as you've seen probably, the, the React isn't the right Tool does not have all the supporting features for creating games at least that's my impressions so maybe using some kind of game engine would be better and uh, something like phaser which is very very popular uh, but when cr you're creating games I believe it's um, really helpful to learn yourself an engine that is widely supported and well established in the industry and uh, one that i found out working pretty nice is unity 3d and of course for anyone else there's the unreal engine both powerful engines that are used in the gaming industry uh, and you've probably played a game built with those engines and both has a really great uh, learning um, where is it? learning um, portals where you can basically start from scratch and figure out how to write games the same goes for mobile apps if you'd like to build a mobile app don't write it with I don't know, HTML5, but maybe go for uh, React Native, which wouldn't be my recommendation based on my experience, but I know that people use it, or Flutter, okay? So don't try to force given type of an app or, or a game or anything else to a given library if it wasn't specifically built for that. I always remember to choose the right tools for that and with that thought and two hours on the clock uh, I'm gonna leave you so yeah that was the longest one uh, please comment like subscribe maybe share your thoughts share uh, how you'd write a game or how you'd improve the code that I presented thank you for that and I'll see you in the next one goodbye